So have any of you ever wondered if like, you know, the Forest Service or uh, Fish and Game are aware of Bigfoots in the areas that they patrol? Do you think they, uh, they're they aware of these creatures and uh, maybe even get reports from people or, you know, reports of activity in these areas and they actually have to go out and investigate these things? I wonder if they know more than they let on. So a couple years ago, I had a run-in with a uh, fish and game officer when I was out around Bailey Lake at the uh, Little Ponderay Wildlife Refuge. Now, uh, back in September of that year, I had found a series of tracks running along the lake. So uh, I spent a lot more time out there all the way up to the point when uh, they would close off the gates for the for the winter season so I'm sure uh, you know these rangers and officers uh, were aware of my vehicle they probably saw me out there a lot so one day I drove out and uh, I'm on uh, I'm packing up my camera equipment into my pack and this officer walks up to me and uh, greets me and asks me if I was going to be doing any fishing at the lake I was like, no, I'm not going to be fishing. And uh, then he asked me, you know, like, what brings me out here? And I was like, I, you know, I'm not going to tell him, you know, oh, yeah, I'm looking for Bigfoot, you know. So I told him that, you know, I'm just out here for some fresh air and do a little uh, nature watching and stuff like that. And uh, he asked me, um, have I seen any wildlife in the area? which I thought was a little odd since I, you know, I basically just told him that I just got out there. So I told him, you know, no, I haven't seen anything. I was like, have you seen anything? And he said, no, there was a little bit of a pause. He's like, which is kind of odd, you know, this place is usually pretty active with wildlife uh, at this time of year. And then there was a little pause and I just kept packing up my sack. And uh, he asked me if... Uh, you know, if I've ever been to uh, Lake McDowell, which is just about a mile and a half or so up the road. And I was like, yeah, I've, I've been there. He's like, well, that'd be a lot more beautiful area to uh, photograph anything, you know, if you saw anything. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll swing by there on the way out. Uh, I told him thanks. And he's like, well, if you're going to stay here, you know, just be safe. And I was like, will do. And uh, he just kind of like just walked off and got in his vehicle. And uh, I eventually, you know, walked down to the lake's edge. And uh, a few minutes later, his vehicle pulls up down there. And he sat there for a while as I walked along the shoreline, you know. I don't know if he was, you know, just, you know, watching me or what, you know. But uh, he eventually just turned around and left. But uh, I didn't really think much of it until I had this opportunity to interview this gentleman and he had a very interesting story to tell. So uh, let's get into it and uh, here's the interview. Okay, before I lead into that, yeah. our, our first discussion, can you tell me who you are and a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Aaron West. I'm pastor in Spokane and I have lived in the area for almost three years. So what uh, what got you interested in Sasquatch, Bigfoot? I always kind of was interested in it as a kid but then um, when we moved up here I was um, well I'd seen your videos I, I always knew that Washington was supposedly the place in the country where they live and so I was naturally inclined to uh, look into it and I, after finding your channel and others I realized boy there's a lot of people who have this uh, reported experience. So you recently told me of an incident out at Bailey Lake and uh, Bailey Lake's an interesting spot for me since I just found tracks out there a couple years ago. So you were out there what happened? Yeah. So I went out there, I camped, I probably pulled in at 11 p.m. and uh, there was just me and another family in the general 
area. Slept. It was a pretty normal night. I did hear some odd sounds off in the distance, but don't make much of it. Uh, but then the next morning, I was going to go kayaking in the lake, knowing that it's a place where there's been a lot of sightings. So I kind of had that on my mind anyway. Then I uh, was driving to go take my kayak over there, and there was a ranger parked nearby. Uh, he was parked in the road talking to the other campers. Um, who and uh, I didn't know what they were talking about, but he was kind of blocking the road. So I rolled down my window and said, is it okay if I go around? I want to go kayaking. And he said, yeah, okay, sure. So I did. Uh, and it just seemed, I mean, it seemed like maybe I, something had happened or whatever, because they seemed to be in an intense conversation. And by the way, he seemed, he was a really nice guy and I don't want to, I mean, nothing bad about him at all. And if I see him again, I mean, uh, he, you know, very polite and I enjoyed talking to him. But he, then his behavior was a little odd. So I was parking, getting my kayak out, inflating it, uh, getting ready to carry it down to the uh, place where I'd put it in. And then, or no, I didn't inflate it yet, getting it out of my car. And then he drove past me and waited for me where I was going to put in at the water line. Uh, so I got it out, I carried it to him, and then he was over there. And he said, hey, how you doing? And good. Are you going to go fishing today? No, I'm not going to go fishing. Okay. And he says... Well, you know, there's another lake that's a lot better for kayaking. Uh, McDowell Lake. Have you heard of kayak uh, McDowell Lake? And I was like, yeah, I heard of it. Uh, I don't know why. And he's like, oh, I just think it's, you know, it's a lot bigger. It's a lot nicer. You might want to kayak over there, uh, in, you know, instead of here. I was like, oh, okay. And then I just said, well, I, I like the rocks here. It's very pretty, even though it's small. Uh, but I just thought that was kind of odd that he would suggest I kayak somewhere else. And then I thought the conversation was over, and so I go down to the lake and start inflating the boat, and he's still back there in the car just kind of looking. Uh, and it was just a kind of an awkward moment. And he goes, so um, so last night, uh, was it pretty quiet? And I just said, um, and I'm starting to think, you know, what? I just said, what do you mean? I guess so. I mean, it's just me and other family. And he's like, so you didn't hear anything, nothing nothing going on, just quiet night. And it's like, yeah, quiet night, pretty quiet, you know. And then I didn't say anything, and, you know, I figured he might say something like, you know, might expect me to be like, why did you ask? But I kind of wanted to see what he would say. But it was just a little bit of an awkward end to the conversation. And he goes, well, you know, there's, uh, there's just sometimes kids messing around, you know, I thought they might be out doing things and I thought okay so just kind of a knowing the history of that place kind of odd kind of strange behavior he was very professional very polite um, no complaints or anything but just uh, and I shared that with you you thought it would be worth recording and uh, to add to the list of kind of odd things at that lake so and I kayaked and it was fine I ended up kayaking to the end hiking around hike uh, found a, another small lake back in the woods nothing really of note just a good time and that's pretty much it so did he say anything about what the activity was or he just said kids messing around that was it like teenagers yeah i think he had said teenagers um yeah there's some teenagers we have a problem you know we got a problem with them coming around messing around and wanted to make sure they weren't here something along those lines and i didn't i didn't ask follow-up questions because i I don't know, I kind of wanted to see what he had to say. And I, because I had in the back of my mind, you know, it, is, it, is he actually trying to get at Bigfoot but not let on? I sort of wanted to let him talk. And this was during the summertime? Oh, man, I should have written down the date. Uh, it was early, I believe it was early summer. I can go back and check my calendar because I'll have it on there. But I did I told you about it? Yeah, we were camping in August. So. Yeah, I think it was. Er I'm trying to remember if it was before or after my vacation in June, but it was either right before it or right after it. Yeah. And I, knowing, I mean, yeah. Very possibly, I mean, it could be kids messing around yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. But all the times I've been out there. I mean, it is a popular place to go fishing and, and camping during the summertime. Yeah. Especially on holidays. But, uh, 
I don't see a lot of kids, especially teenagers, driving out way out there to just screw around. Yeah, it's really remote. Especially with you know the park service and yeah, and rangers. And especially with him trying to hint that I should go kayak somewhere else. That was the weirdest thing. That is weird. Yeah. I'd, maybe he's just being friendly. Maybe he just... But, I mean, it's a gorgeous lake. Why would it be a bad place to kayak? That's the other thing. But. I've seen Lake Medell is a nice nice little lake. Yeah, but... But it's a popular place for everyone to go to. Yeah, what makes that a better choice? It just seemed like an odd odd thing. So yeah. maybe a, he was just trying to be friendly, and I am I feel like a jerk if that's all it was. But Well, there was yeah. a story a long time ago about uh, a camper being overturned. You, did I ever tell you about that? No, I did not know that. Um, so an elderly couple was camping out there. And uh, probably, I want to say, late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, they kept having this bad smell around their campsite uh, earlier in the evening. The night they, they went to bed, um, I believe they said they heard a scream. And then their, their whole RV or camper trailer was being shaken back and forth violently. And uh, I wish I'd known that before I was camping they there. They freaked out. They got in their car and drove back into town, contacted the sheriff's office, and when to have them come out to, you know, investigate what's going on, they came out and supposedly the the, the whole camper trailer was knocked over onto its side. Oh wow. So There you go. But well, I haven't been able to confirm that with the sheriff's department yet. Yeah. So but that was one interesting story out there. Cool. Anything I do. Else? Uh, not that I'm going to share right now. <laughs> <laughs>